Uh, one of the things that is going to be really important to make this a meaningful hour experience is to get your mute, unmute button fingers ready. So we're gonna do some bur burpees first thing this morning. Turn your videos on if you can. Let's get those finger burpees going so that you're warmed up and you won't break any knuckles or anything when you start hitting the button. And if you are uh, coordinated, you can try the opposite side burpee uh, coordination like this. That's, that's even more difficult. And then, you know, maybe some round to make sure you don't, uh, rotator cups aren't, aren't messed up and you should be ready. Okay, your index finger should be ready. Uh, this is all about participation this morning. Uh, this is a entire session dedicated to feedback and going back over what we learned, what we have experienced and the insights that we've got and sharing them. Now, what's the point of sharing them? Because everybody had a different one. And something that caught you and may be life transforming may have been missed because somebody else was concentrating on something else. But when you say it, it might be as transformative for them now, if they happen to miss it in the earlier part uh, when they were concentrating on something else. So this is really a chance to distill everything down to the absolute gems that you pulled out and be ready to share them. So this is highly group interactive. Okay, why is, there we go. So market center specifics, um, is this right? Uh, yeah, this is right, there we go. Okay, sorry, this is what happens when I go into this mode. Okay, uh, first thing. The slides that we're going to use for this um, are a little bit altered uh, from this format. So I talked to Stacy last night and we're mainly gonna concentrate on ahas. So from a market center perspective, we've all been able to, in our respective market centers, figure out how we fit in there and what the resources are. It's very important to have your local resources in the market center identified for who you can go to for help, who you can go to for questions, who you can go to for motivation, who you can go to for insight. So hopefully during the course of Ignite, you've made closer relationships with your team leader, your MCAs, your operating principals, fellow agents, and that you can then be able to apply those resources to the job at hand, which is building your business. So with that in mind, let's go back over some ahas. And instead of just doing what we typically do, which is what's your aha? I thought I would categorize these to try and get us to think a little deeper and be able to share things that will be absolutely the most useful for the team. So the first one I'd like to start with, and I've got a whole list and each one of them we're gonna go through, everybody share, and then I'll go on to the next one and we'll share on those. So you gotta get those mute fingers working. The first one is what's the greatest thing that you've learned for your business since Ignite started, okay? So let's start, I'm just gonna roll call. I've got you all here on a matrix. So if it's okay with you, um, I'll call you out. And if you don't have anything or you don't wanna speak, uh, I'm not here to put you on the spot. Just say pass and I'll go on to the next person, okay? That way nobody has to feel uncomfortable. Uh, but I would like as many of you to participate as possible because the group learning is what makes this valuable. So I'm gonna take you in the order that you appear on my screen. So Linda Haro, would you be willing to tell us what is the greatest thing you've learned for your business during Ignite? Well, there's been a lot of things that I learned during Ignite, but I think the most important thing is to, um, uh, um, you know, grow your database, watch out for clues. You know, people say things all the time that are, that are a clue. And if you don't jump on it, you're going to miss the opportunity. Excellent. Thank you for sharing that. Karen Sun, how about you? What is the greatest thing you've learned for your business over the last couple of weeks? Sure, yeah. Um, I think the most important thing to me is uh, um, 
try to get rid of my limiting belief and start to believe in myself um, and um, pretend that I've already grasped a lot of uh, new knowledge. Um, and um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the most important thing. And um, have a good habit of uh, um, developing your business on a daily basis, be a very well-organized person, manage your time and energy well, and then, yeah. Excellent, thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. Sure. Rick, how about you? What's the greatest thing you've learned for your business? Uh, aside from uh, Bob Stolt being one awesome, engaging <laughs> facilitator, presenter, I've Thank always think, <laughs> um, and it's always about the basics. I've been in the business for a while. And the reason why I say into this, press, this uh, uh, Ignite is because I want to relearn the basics. It's always about the basics. And uh, it comes down to systems and structure to maintain your success in business. Without those, you just will continue running circles and they'll uh, continue being a new agent. So um, yeah, learn quite a bit. And especially, uh, uh, that we, we got a good market. We just need to learn it, uh, learn to work it, and that uh, stay persistent, consistent, and always tenacious. Excellent. I love that word. Tenacious is one of my, my favorites. We'll come back to that. Thank you, Rick. That was great. Virginia, how about you? What's the greatest thing you've learned for your business? I think it's just developing habits and um, the follow through, follow up, and continue studying those stats um, in you know my market area. And um, everything is kind of coming together where I'm getting confused whether it's a, the listing club or whether it's the transition one, uh, because there's so much I've learned from all three things that are occurring at the same time. Okay. Good, excellent. Thank you, Virginia. Hilda, what have you learned? Okay, moving on. Rick. No, I'm, I'm oh, there sorry. you are. Okay. <laughs> Just apologies. slow on the trigger. You know, I really want to uh, give a big shout out to all the instructors for this Ignite 2.0. I and, and also to Keller Williams International for creating great materials. Uh, this is a new course um, that was designed to um, walk hand in step with command and the new models that are going to be coming out in the MREA 2.0 book soon. Uh, so I think it was a sensational job. Uh, I believe everybody poured in 1000%. I really gained a lot of knowledge from the expertise of the top producers and, um, you know, just getting the feedback from our agents about, you know, how wonderful it was to uh, have, you know, three hours of their unconditional time where they've worked at other firms and haven't, you know, ever even had a five minute conversation with the mega. So I've just you know, again, come to realize what a great environment we're in, what a great company, and uh, just took away so much about the culture of Keller Williams and what sets us apart. So that includes you too, Bob. Thank you very much for um, stepping in for Stacy today and for all your contributions during the program. Thank you, Hilda. Very You're good. Welcome. I second that, Rick. Bob. Yes, Virginia? I said I just second that. I'm just... Oh, well. um, with all the, the, the training from you and Mark, it's just endless. So um, to me, you guys have put in uh, so much time. So I just want to second what Hilda said. Very good. Thank you, Virginia. Very nice. Appreciate it. Rick Medina. Thanks, what did you learn that was best, uh, the greatest thing about uh, how to build your business? Oh, Rick won't be able to speak, but I think he'll be in the chat. He has a day job. Oh, okay. No worries. Yeah, that's kind of a problem. <laughs> uh, especially if you're going to meet him. So I'm sorry, Rick. Didn't know that, but thank you for Jacqueline for letting me know. No problem. Uh, if you would keep an eye on the chat, that's the one thing I can't manage, Jacqueline. Okay. Yeah, no problem. And if he, he puts something yeah. in, if you would interrupt me, uh, please let me know. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Harish. How about you? 
What's the greatest thing you learned for your business during Ignite? Hi, Bob. I am a new person. I haven't even joined it. But, okay. you know, Hilda made me join this, uh, especially this Ignite 2 course. And Good. I am so amazed with the course you guys are providing. It's just a wonderful company, as Hilda mentioned it. And all the, you know, uh, uh, speakers were just amazing, including you. And starting with uh, Hilda, she explained me very well about the company and about herself and how the progress goes with everyone joining the company. It's just amazing. And I, I'm just learning, I'm beginning. <laughs> so I'm willing forward to see that, you know, I just do like one of you. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome, Harish. Thank you. And thank you, Hilda. Shout out there. So uh, good job. Uh, it's exciting when you watch people come into this industry. Uh, I came out of uh, 27 years of high tech. And this has been such a learning experience over the last year for me too. So uh, excellent, Haresh. Great, great that you're getting a chance to come in this way and get some good training as you launch your business. Thank Vinod, you. how about you? Uh, yeah. greatest the greatest thing I learned. The greatest thing I learned is, you know, uh, before that, needless to say, all the courses have been amazing, and there's a lot of learning and the content. Mm -hmm. uh, if ask me the greatest thing, it would be leveraging this wonderful KW network. Mm -hmm. uh, that means uh, connecting the dots, the when and uh, where to go when when you need something. Absolutely. That was a wonderful, you know, you guys put together everything uh, in this Signet program. Excellent. Yes, connecting the dots. That's huge. Thank you for sharing that, Vinod. Sure. Ali. How about you? What did you learn? The greatest thing for your business? Hi, Bob. Hi, I'm sorry. I'm in the middle of something. But yes, I learned okay. a lot from you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm very new. This is my third meeting so far. But I learned a lot from uh, negotiation skill and uh, business as well. Um, uh, what else? <laughs> sorry, I'm not very focused. No, that's all right. That was a good feedback. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, I just mostly can listen. I'm still writing contract right now and negotiate with other houses. I love it. Every time, Ali, you and I talk, you are in the middle of your business. I I'm sorry. I'm love really love that. No, sorry. No, it's absolutely great that you are that engaged and you've got that much going. Your energy is endless. So. Uh, no apologies. It's absolutely okay. Great feedback. Thank you for sharing with us. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Melissa, how about you? What was the greatest takeaway for your business? Hi, good morning, Bob. Good morning. Um, I'm going to have to say, I have a couple of notes here, but I'm going to have to start with mindset. Um, you know, it is very, very obvious that we have an incredible training, support, and technology um, here at Keller Williams, and especially with our two um, offices here. And I'm realizing that the only thing that can really stand in my way is me. <laughs> and the start of that is with my mindset. And the second note I made here was a bold law. It's simple, not easy. Um, and that kind of came from the start of every Ignite, you show us how to grow your business mm -hmm. and run your business. And at the end of every Ignite, we're given the formula, the 10-4. So it is very simple, but it's not easy. And that's why mindset's so important. Wow, that was really good. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. I, I love citing the bold stuff. Um, I'm gonna do something a little unconventional. It's gonna look weird but I'm showing you on my office wall. I keep bold laws right here on my wall where I have to glance at them multiple times a day. And I find that that's really helpful as, long, as well as database statistics, which are on my wall here. And I've got the five models and notes up there. And then I'm practicing my Latin. So good job. Definitely use the wisdom that's around you and keep it on top of your mind. It's huge to do that. 
Excellent. Thanks, Melissa. Rob, how about you, sir? What's the greatest thing you've learned from Ignite for your business? Okay, may have stepped away. It's okay. Jacqueline, let's see. Oh, oh, there is. I'm here. Hang on. So we don't follow All right. What was the question? The question is, what's the greatest thing that you learned in Ignite for your business? You know, it keeps going back to the basics for me. The old Vince Lombardi, every year you take out a football and show it to all his, all his good football players and go, guys, this is a football. And the new guys would laugh and say, yeah, yeah, we know what a football is. And they go, do you really? Do you really know? It's all about muscle memory. It's all about the basics. And no matter how many times you hear it, guys, it's all about to where you don't have to think about it. When somebody pops in a question, you're answering it without even having to go back and stop and think. Yes. And to me, that's the greatest thing is so I can train the muscle, the biggest muscle we got in our mind. So that when somebody hits them, somebody can answer it correctly and go, oh, my gosh, what did I just say? And the guy goes, well, that's the perfect answer. And you go, I don't even know what I said. You know, that right. we, we get so entrenched in this so we know what to do without having to think about it. Because we're all going to do the right thing, or we should. But we, we got to, the greatest thing to me is just hearing the same stuff over and over and getting entrenched to me. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. That was excellent. Thanks for sharing that. No Nancy. problem. Anytime. <laughs> Nancy, how about you? What's the greatest thing you've learned in the last couple of weeks in Ignite for your business? Um, I think what Melissa said kind of really hit it in the ballpark for me. Okay. Um, and just knowing that we have the support. I mean, there's so many systems, so many things that we have to kind of learn but knowing that we have the support in the systems I think goes a long way so um, I'm just proud to be part of this family and I'll move forward excellent thank you Nancy appreciate it and Sherry how about you what's a great Hi, good, morning. good morning everyone good morning so I, uh, you know, agree with the mindset and believing in yourself and there's just so many resources through uh, this this past these past couple of weeks, I've learned all about the command and listing presentations and buyers presentations, all of the resources that Keller Williams has to offer us, and reiterating how important it is to make those contacts, work with your sphere of influence, leverage all of those people that you already know that are are close to you, and letting them know that you're in the business. I, I feel empowered through all of these sessions that I do know quite a bit about the business. And that, again, empowers me. However, I also understand that there's so much to learn, but it makes me feel great to know that everybody's kind of in the same boat. We're all learning. We all have questions. And so that's not something that I should um feel bad about. I mean, it's just so exciting every day to get up and 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 know that you can learn something new every day and in the end it's all about the application i can have all of these resources and all of this knowledge and now it's time to apply that and to make a difference and so i'm going to take you know several different action items and make it a part of my daily habit to apply what i've learned and to make a difference in my business fantastic that was a great insight i like that learn every day. There is a term that came up probably five years ago professionally uh, where you saw all over LinkedIn, suddenly profiles began to have the word lifetime learner. And that's really what we are, isn't it? Especially in business for ourselves. So excellent, Sherry. Thank you for sharing that. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. That was good. Um, either on your screen or on your little feedback button on the thing. If that was helpful, do a thumbs up. And let me see if that was worth doing with you for future reference. Okay, good. Looks like it was useful. 
If it's not useful, I don't want to do it. So excellent. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate that feedback. Okay, second thing. Business is one thing. Business is about learning, learning techniques, learning systems, learning processes, uh, learning information that you put in your own uh, database in your mind for how to do things and how to do things well. The next thing I want to touch on is a little softer, and that is motivation. And what I'd like you to think about for a moment is what is the one thing, and now this is a little definition than the one thing in Keller Williams. This is the one thing more like um, city slickers, where you figure out what's the one thing. So in this case, what I'd like to know is motivation. Motivation is everything. Facts are fantastic, but they tell us psychologically, facts only get us even with people who are highly analytical, only to a certain point in a decision because the decision-making process in human brains involves both facts and it involves emotion. And motivation frequently resides on the motivation side. It always is connected. Fact and emotion do drive all decisions in humans. It is balanced heavily on a, from almost 0, 100 analytical to almost 0, 100 emotional. And all of us lie somewhere on that continuum. There's no right or wrong. It's the way we're hardwired. So let me ask you, if you're willing to share, what is the key out of Ignite that's going to make you motivated to press on and increase your real estate career? What's the motivation piece? you might have taken away from this. And for this one, I'm not gonna go around person for person because now I'm starting to get a little more personal and I'm gonna get a little more personal after this one. So I don't wanna put anybody on the spot or to feel uncomfortable. But if you will share the one thing you took away from this that's gonna help you be more motivated. So get your fingers, unmute and someone share with me. I'm good hey, to go. Go ahead, Rob. Okay, yeah. Rob, take it well, away. The, fin the financial portions, when you talked about, we talked about our budgets and our everything. And basically it comes down to me, I owe, I owe so off to work, I go. <laughs> Very good. Thank you for being willing to share that, Rob. Yeah, Marissa, I owe what? money, so I got to go to work. I have dreams. I have trips I want to take. You know, and one thing about me, when I have bills, I sell something. When I don't, I just, I'm too happy. I'm mellow, you know. And so I, my motivation is I got to have a trip. I got to have a goal. I got to have a bill, you know. Hilda's too nice to me. She doesn't beat me up enough. So <laughs> I got to have some more bills. I got to have some more pressure. So that's my deal. So I just went and booked three trips. So I got to pay for them. I get just paid for my commercial stuff and I borrowed it out of my savings account. I got to go pay it back. So now I got pressure. I got to go to work. I got to sell something commercial. Very good. All right. Be careful what you ask for, Rob. Okay. Give it to me, Hilda. I'm broke. All right. I have no money. 100 calls a day. It's time to get bold. Starting Monday. <laughs> Starting Monday. I got to go to work. I'm broke. That's All right. A yeah. Good transition, Hilda. That's an excellent <laughs> transition. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, in the last 30 years, I've been quoted enough that some of the people who've worked with me and that I haven't seen for a long time will still mention that they remember the phrase when I look at them and go, we all got to eat. So there's no doubt monetary is a driver. Uh, and that's good to acknowledge. So thanks, Rob, for adding that in. Melissa, did you have one? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that um, being here and learning with everyone and all the support and hearing each other's experiences, knowing that, you know, we're all kind of going through this together and none of us are alone in how we're feeling. Um, I, I walk away from these classes full of inspiration, which organically kind of moves me into motivation um, from a place of 
you know, excitement, um, opposed to, you know, <laughs> trying to get my engine going and forcing myself into motivation. So um, I think inspiration and, and the feeling at the end of every class that I can do this um, is really what was the key for me in, in Ignite for motivation. Excellent. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing that. Really appreciate it. Inspiration. Yeah, if we're not inspired, we don't do it. So. Oh, and another bold law for you. Um, okay. Logic, logic makes you think, emotion makes you act. There you go. Absolutely. And I'd like to tag on to what um, Nancy just said there as well. That, um, please, Sherry. So it's, it's, I feel exactly the same way that I feel so motivated after these sessions. And one of the reasons why I got into the real estate business is I love helping people and I love our community. And it's, I guess the way that I look at it is I'm, I'm not out there as, you know, trying to sell something to people. I'm really out there trying to help people obtain their dreams or to maybe get out of a situation that is kind of a harrowing situation where they maybe can't afford having that house anymore or they need to move out of state or recently if they had somebody pass away in their family where now they're in a dilemma where they so it's just about people and really making sure that people are being taken care of and not taken advantage of oh that's excellent i love that motivation it's you know, an awful lot of the world around us is about taking advantage of every personal opportunity uh, to take advantage. And quite frankly, I think that's kind of an ethical, um, not even a, a bedrock. It's, it's something subterranean. There's so much higher ethics to how we can look out for our own good, as well as looking out for the good of others. And I really appreciate that, Sherry. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Hi, Bob. For me, um, it's the the knowledge that I've gained, the resources, knowing that I can go to just about anybody, well, anybody in this company for help if I need it. Um, I've already leaned on a couple of people. Good. Um, it, it, it's important to me to make people happy, you know, and I love people. I love talking to people. So this is really perfect for me. And the motivation that I got from Ignite just kind of lights the fire even more. Oh, excellent. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. It's huge not to be alone. It's just huge to know you've got resources and systems. That's very true, especially when you're new and you're not sure. And, and I know that, you know, Melissa has been a really big help to me, especially if I do something that, um, you know, maybe I should have done it a different way. She'll come and say, mom, <laughs> you should have done it this way. And so I'm learning, I'm learning. Excellent. Thank you, Linda, for sharing. She's doing that. amazing, you guys. She's doing I have really no good. doubt. No doubt at all. Very good. Would anyone else like to add what has been personally the key motivation element you've taken away from this Ignite? I go once. Bob, I'd like to add, this is Rick. Yes, Rick, thank you. Jump in. Yes, so uh, that was a great book that was written many years ago. Everything I learned, I learned in kindergarten. <laughs> I love that one, yeah. <laughs> and so every, the basics that we're learning now, you know, coming up with your, you know, your goals and setting down your goals, and, uh, buckling down and making and work hard, and uh, touch people on a regular basis, make lifelong relationships with, with your clients. They're not all new. They're all pretty much we've learned before many years ago. It's just that the main motivation is always the person in the mirror. Uh, Bob mentioned that uh, you know if you have problems increasing your motivation, just put those white envelopes that comes through your mail, stack them up. They call them bills. <laughs> That'll be good enough motivation for you to do something and make something happen that particular day. And so as I'm coming close to my deployment here in Kuwait in July, 2021, uh, uh, in, a, in a couple of months, in a few months here. Okay. Uh, they, they say that motivation, um, when you're about to 
you're facing mortality that yeah. gets you more in tune with what you need to do in life uh because there's a possibility i may not come back <laughs> and so i'm really hunkering down and writing down my goals and of course using my years of experience and basically elevating my business to the next level and so there are many things that motivates me but particularly you know it's all oh, the secret as we look for successes in every way we can uh ways to motivate us it's always a person in the mirror that, that's looking back at you that no matter what happens you're always going to be with that person no matter what and that uh that person will will carry you through excellent rick thank you for sharing that you'll be in our prayers uh for safety when you're there that's uh that's a tough one and uh I have a youngest son who was off to OCS this summer in Quantico uh, for the Marine Corps. So uh, I can appreciate the mindset. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Bob. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing. All well, right. Any others? I do this going once, going twice, going three times thing just so there isn't too long of a pause that gets uncomfortable. So going once. Going twice, going three times. All right, on to the next question. Thank you all. Those were some great answers and very personal. Now, this one's gonna get even more personal. I'd like to know if you're willing to share, has there been an implication from Ignite and what you're looking at for your business changes, your systems, your processes, and what you've learned motivationally to help you grow your business, is there any insights about things in your personal life that were aha as you concentrate on expanding and growing your business? And this is purely voluntary. Is there anybody who'd like to share one around your personal life, how that's gonna mash together? So I, I do have a comment. I um, have five children and have a really busy life with everything that goes on. Of course, we're super family oriented and just tons mm -hmm. of people all around all the time. And in the, in the younger years with the kids, every year, for example, I would write Christmas cards to people and always have that Christmas letter and send out that Christmas picture. And then for whatever reason, I went through a time in my life where I just stopped doing that. And, you know, I see my mom does it, my sister does it, and I still get Christmas cards from people. And, you know, every year I'm like, I got to do that again. So it's kind of like getting back to what I was saying earlier, your, um, your sphere and all the people that you love and know and having command and putting those contacts in there and making sure that I'm getting back to writing my Christmas cards maybe or the Valentine's cards that I used to write and keeping my command up to date and getting in touch with my people. So I think it's like I've realized that I need to, you know, make sure that I make that a, a priority in my life. Mm -hmm. That's that's a great insight to share. Thank you, Sherry. That personal touch. It's funny that you'd mention that Christmas cards. I've never written Christmas cards just it's part of my nature and my mother asked me one time when i was in my 20s she goes why don't you write christmas cards you're not going to have any friends and i've always said well if my friends require a christmas card i'm not going to have any friends you're absolutely right <laughs> so uh you know it's it's a thing but what i have started doing is handwriting thank you cards and comment cards to agents in my office when i see things that just really strike me so I can tell you that these little expressions, handwritten, and I got these all at the dollar store, um, and they were a dollar for each set of them. And I think there's six cards in a note. This has been really fun. I feel more connected with the compliments and the thanks that I give when I write it with my own hand, rather than just sending an email. Everybody gets an email. But to actually spend the time to you know, write it out in cursive. You know, I don't know if I'll make it to the end of my life uh, when people can all still read cursive because cursive isn't being taught anymore. But um, I agree with you, Sherry. It's, it's that personal touch. And there's something different when you use your own hand to make the words. 
And Bob, that personal touch that, that you're using with your thank you cards is, I think, very important. It would be to me because I, you know, I'm all into um, things that motivate me and, and somebody coming and saying thank you or, oh, my God, you're so awesome or you did the right thing. That pushes me harder because I want that recognition. Yes. Yes. Thank you for sharing that, Linda. So on Rob, to just comment on your cursive, not too long ago, my 20 year old daughter, she's probably about 15, got a card from my mom. And my mom, of course, wrote in cursive. And my daughter said, I can't read scribble. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. <laughs> I have a college friend that goes all the way back to when my hair was brown and my beard was brown and I was a teenager. And uh, I communicate with him once every three to five years. Uh, that seems to be enough. And we tend to communicate in Latin uh, just for giggles. <laughs> so we handwrite it and it's in Latin. And I don't know, it, it's part of a bond that goes back, you know, 60, well, not 60, 50 years. So half a century. Nice. It's, it's important. I like that. I like the personal touch. I've always sworn when I, I eventually um, retire, I'm going to take all of these and I'm going to throw them in a lake and leave them there. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can drop by. You can send me a, a letter in the physical mail. And that's how you get a hold of me. And I did that once. Back in my first house, I couldn't afford a phone because interest was 18% on my house. Uh, the first one that I bought in Amadeh. And so at the time, I just made a deal with all my friends. And I said, when you want to come by, just come by. You're not going to have to worry about interrupting anything. Just come by. Let's see how that works. And I tell you, I did that for three years without a phone in the house and without cell phones. Yeah, it was that long ago. And I can tell you those were the happiest social years of my life. My friends actually came by instead of, you know, phoning or whatever, and then you can't get it all hooked up. They'd be in the neighborhood and they would just drop by. It was my favorite year socially. So um, it's a thought. I'm not saying it's a great way to do it anymore, but, but uh, it does emphasize that personal touch. Excellent. Any others for the personal life implications? Yeah, I want to uh, share something. So prior to starting this career, um, you know, I worked as a nurse many hours, always tired, crazy, you know, hours, very early, very late, weekends, holidays, whatnot. And I never had time, you know, so I thought or felt to socialize with people because it felt like, you know, just sitting in a coffee shop drinking coffee with someone in the middle of the day when I, you know, have this precious day off work, I need to do so many things. I just can't afford to waste that time just, you know, for pleasure and do nothing. And now what I'm realizing that when I talk to people and I enjoy conversation and I have lunch with friends, I'm actually working. And that's awesome. And I feel great. And I'm like retraining my brain and rewriting my paradigm that, Every time I talk to people, I go to grocery shop, store, I hike, I meet someone in a coffee shop, I'm still working. <laughs> and I don't even feel guilty about it. I'm actually, so now I'm combining what I like to do with, you know, with what potentially also bring me income. And it just like this ball went on and I was like, wow, I'm in the right field. I love what I do and I can now finally communicate with catch up with all those people that I didn't talk to and you know when I start calling my sphere like two three months ago when I just I got into this business I called people that I didn't talk to in like years and first it was scary so I start with mm -hmm. someone who I know I will be comfortable and then it just went on and on and on I'm like wow this is actually fun and people were happy to hear from me and I was like I actually enjoy it I talk to people I, you know, I have fun. I catch up on what's going on in their life. It makes me feel good. It makes them feel good that, you know, I care about them. 
and I'm actually working <laughs> at the same time. So that was my big aha. So I just, and then I participate in like committees and I don't feel like, you know, it's an addition to my work. It's all part of it. Oh, what a great insight. Thank you for sharing that one. Having come out of high tech engineering, it's the same thing. Every time I think about a meeting, it's, oh God, I got work to do. I can't go sit in a meeting. The meetings are horrible. Committees are horrible. You know, and now I'm finding it's entirely the opposite. Yeah. The meetings are good. They're business driving. The, the whole world just turned upside down. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. I'm sure there's several in here who, who, who have probably been in the same situation. So yeah. I, like just in a simple example, last night we went on a, our normal routine walk in the evening with a dog, with my husband and in the park. And I met my daughter's a friend parents walking that I haven't seen in, in the wild, you know, since mm -hmm. Corona started. And we stopped and we talked for 20 minutes. And of course they asked me about how's the business going. Right. And I'm like, that's amazing. I just talk to people that I love, like to talk. And I brought up my business and I reminded them that I'm in real estate. So yeah. it's like, it's now all together. I don't have that separation, like life work. I don't need to balance it. It's uh -huh. all and this is just something that just amazing. I, I love it. Oh, thank you for sharing. That was really inspiring. Anna, that was awesome. Yeah, thank you. It's kind of, you know, sinking into my brain that I do, don't have to like make that distinction. Okay, now I'm working and now I'm wasting time because I'm not working. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> That's a fantastic mindset. I'm going to steal that from you. Yeah, yeah. You basically <laughs> leave and work. It's all one because work is part of life. You don't need to separate and balance them. It's all together. Excellent. I have a couple notes I can add in there. Yes, please. I was just flipping through. So every, every Ignite, I keep a, kind of an Ignite journal, um, journal slash notes. And I was just flipping through it, looking for, you know, some things that I have written that, um, you know, has kind of become part of my personal life. And um, the notes that I took here are lis listening and asking questions, having connections like your quarterly calls and gratitude, like the, the Christmas cards and thank you cards. Um, we do that for our clients. Are we doing that with our best friends and our family and and maybe people that we're not expecting um, business from. Um, and then another one was value proposition. I mean, we talk about our value proposition in our work. What's our value proposition in our family and, and with our friends and to ourselves? Um, time blocking was another one that came up. I time block a lot for work. Um, and I find that I'm also time blocking in my personal life, um, you know, uh, a special time set aside for my family. Although I am guilty that um, sometimes, especially when I'm working with buyers, that tends to bleed <laughs> in, into that area a little bit. But um, that is something that I have been doing in my personal life and didn't even realize it. Um, I also have limiting beliefs and affirmations in my personal life and um, with myself and my family. Um, and then the last thing I had here was um, goal setting. So I don't just set goals for my business, but I set goals of, you know, um, wanting to grow a family and wanting to have um, vacations and, and eventually someday going on my honeymoon when COVID is over. Mm -hmm. So I was actually able to find a little piece of almost every class that from Ignite that is part of my personal life as well. Excellent. Yeah, that integration is so important. Thank you for sharing that. Any other insights? So as we transition from this topic to another topic, I'll simply say this. We have one life and it's 24 hours a day. You choose what you do and how it overlaps and how you segment it between personal, professional, recreational, 
and sleep. And trying to mix those all in the proper order and the proper priority is sometimes really difficult, especially in our society that moves so fast. So the fact that several of you have mentioned, you know, this is fun, I'm doing what I enjoy. That's right, your work needs to be fun. It's really important because you're gonna spend a minimum of a third of your life and probably realistically more like a half or more doing work. And if you aren't happy during, you've lost the happiness of half of your life. Just doesn't make sense. So I encourage you all pursue that, that paradigm to be able to schedule, interlace, whatever adjectives you want to use or verbs about how to make them all fit together and keep happiness in there as well, because it's so important to be doing what we love. So thank you all. You brilliant sharing. I really appreciate it. All right. Now we're going to go on a little lighter side. We're almost coming up to the top of the hour. And here's the question. What was the funniest moment you had during Ignite? What was the funniest thing you saw or thought or heard someone say, and let's all stay positive, you know, not mistakes or anything, but uh, what was the funniest thing you saw during Ignite? Probably your stories, Bob. Look, <laughs> my stories. Okay, thanks, <laughs> Melissa. Anybody else see anything? You know, I don't know if, if I would consider it funny, but I loved the stories of all the different speakers, um, especially Alan Wang. He's quite the, quite the speaker. Yes, he is, absolutely. So I raised my boys by myself. So we had interesting dinner table discussions from the time they were big enough to sit up and, and eat. And um, being able to engage in stories, I made a comment sometime in their teen years that I'd come to the belief that the most valuable thing in human experience throughout all of the millennia of our history, I used to teach Western Civ, so you know, this, I've spent some time looking at this stuff. And I came to a conclusion, the most valuable thing to humans across cultures, across languages, and across millennia of time is a story. Story is more valuable than any commodity. It's more valuable than any precious thing like gold, gems, etc. If you look at the money that's in movie making, that's been in writing stories and books, that the money that was spent to enshrine stories in the ancient world, even if they had to chisel them into stone, pretty much defines the story as the most valuable thing in human experience. Uh, religions are all built around stories of human experience. So I think that's huge, having stories, learning from experience. Thank you, Linda, for sharing that. All right, let's transition on. We've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, tell me one thing, and this one I am gonna go around and hit everybody in the order that you happen to be on my screen. And I want you to tell me this, what's the one behavior you're gonna change as a result of Ignite? One behavior you're gonna change as a result of Ignite. The philosophers telling, tell us that nothing is different until something changes. So having a mental assent to knowing we should do something and then actually doing something are completely different. So think about it for a moment. What is the one thing you're going to change behavior-wise as the result of Ignite? So I'm just taking you on the order on the screen. Anna Fine, have you got an answer for us? She's on mute. Sorry. Sorry, I wasn't I was getting me some tea and I missed what was the question. 
No problem. The question is, what is the one behavior you're going to change or do differently or add as a result of Ignite? Uh, I will be consistent on talking to people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and not to feel like I'm wasting time when I talk to people. <laughs> and, and just enjoy, you know, enjoy every, every single activity that I do, regardless if it's related to real estate or not related, just, you know, have fun. Excellent. That's Not a great behavioral change. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Linda Haro, what's the, what are you going to change? The one thing you're going to change behaviorally? Well, I'm going to, um, like Anna said, be consistent in, in staying in contact with my sphere of influence. The problem is, you know, again, I'm new at this and I haven't talked to some people for a long, long time and you get on the phone with them and an hour and a half later, you know, you're still on the phone with them. So somehow I have to figure out how to condense that and still, you know, be effective. But um, that, that's my big um, behavior that I'm going to change is stay in touch with my sphere of influence and do it every single day. Excellent. Thank you, Linda, for those behavioral changes. All right, Virginia, how about you? What's the one thing behaviorally going to change as a result of Ignite? transition from one module to another module and you just hey rob oh. hit the mute button You're sorry good. no problem virginia please well it's on a personal level i had uh, my stationary bike delivered and it is now assembled and it's ready for me to sit on it and start pedaling it's a personal thing <laughs> that's great that's a person a perfectly good thing to take away from ignite good job karen sun what behavioral thing are you going to change? Oh, yeah. Um, I would think that um, usually I prefer to talk in a very structured way. But right now, after learning um, Ignite, I know that in your structured talk, you can also add a personal touch um, as well as uh, um, use some of your stories to share with your family and friends to inspire them to um, maybe persuade them. Yeah, I, yeah, this is what I've learned. Very good. Thank you for sharing, Karen. Rick, how about you? What's the one thing you're going to change behaviorally as a result of Ignite? He's not there. Okay, he's not there. No problem. Linda Haro, how about you? You already asked me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I resized my screen and everybody moved around. I bad. can go next, Bob. <laughs> okay, Denise, go for it. I um, I just need to be a little bit more organized than my day. Um, when I started two months ago, I was already working with clients. So I wasn't even onboarded yet. I haven't done my Facebook page, my Instagram page, and I was already pulled by clients to different open houses. Okay. So being able to you know, set aside a few hours and make it more structured, like an intentional, I think will really help my business a lot. Excellent. That's a great insight and a good behavior change. Thanks, Denise. You're welcome. Next up, Melissa, how about you? Yeah, um, my very first bold coach told me the right answer is always lead gen. However, I've known that since my first bold. And so I had to start trying to figure out what's the one thing I can do, such by doing so would make lead gen easier or unnecessary. Well, it's always necessary, but easier. And the answer I came up with was accountability. So I will be adding accountability um, in the form of my husband <laughs> to, um, to my business starting Monday. Outstanding. Thank you for sharing that, Melissa. Wilma, how about you? What's the one thing you're going to change behaviorally? I'd say um, engage, be more engaged. Engage, okay. Um, give myself a little bit more time towards the business. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Wilma. Thank you. Next up, Sherry, how about you? What are you going to change as one behavior as a result of Ignite? 
I'm here. Sorry, I had to no hit the mute button. So I guess um, what popped into my mind is when I used to teach at, um, at Valley Christian up in Dublin, I used to try to inspire my students by saying, you know, if you can dream it, mm -hmm. then you can do it. Meaning, and I would tell them, you know, everybody has different dreams, ambitions, and goals. And so if it's in your mind, on your heart, then that means that it's actually meant just for you. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, obviously good thoughts that come into your mind. So what I need to do is, again, just, you know, act on that. So I have so many dreams, ambitions, and goals. And time is of essence. I can't just think that that's something in, you know, my future long off that if that thought pops into my mind right now, for example, if I'm passing a house and I see it, it looks like it's in distress or it might be, uh, you know, an opportunity for me, then I need to act on it right now. If I, yes. if somebody pops into my mind, contact that person, it doesn't mean wait a week. It means sit down right now and contact that person. So I think that's what I'm, you know, that's what I need to do is really make sure that I act right away, that I don't wait, because I've noticed that some of the opportunities that I've thought about, I've waited on, and then I'll, I'll see, like, for example, the house go up for sale, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I could have had an opportunity there, you know, so I just really need to act on my own thoughts and goals and ambitions and do it today. Wow, excellent. Thank you for sharing that. I struggle with exactly the same one, and it was a mind shift. When I was in engineering, anytime you had to make phone calls or contacts, it was something that got in the way of your job. And so you naturally start procrastinating it. And I have found now the mind shift had to be, this is my job. So I do have to get after it as priority zero and do it first thing. So. Thanks. I underscore that, Sherry. I definitely get that one. Thanks for sharing. Uh, can I just add a quick um, remark sure. on that? Uh, there is a great uh, coach, uh, Mel Robbins. Uh, she, she has this uh, five-second rule. When you have a thought, this is the inspired action. You, you have five seconds before your mind will talk you out of it. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, getting up in the morning, you decide I'm going to get up early and I'm going to go for a run. And if you okay. just give yourself five seconds, you're going to talk yourself out of it. <laughs> so don't give yourself, just do five, like launching the rocket, do five, four, three, boom, do it. Before you had an opportunity to talk yourself out. Excellent. Thank you. That's a good story. All right. How about Ali? Ali, what have you got? Okay, Ali, maybe hey, Bob. yes. I went ahead and put the five second rule uh, TED talk that Anna's talking about in the chat. It's oh, awesome. Excellent. Thanks, Melissa. Okay, let's try Kevin. Kevin, do you have one? Okay, not hearing anything. Uh, I'm going to keep moving. Jump back in if if I skip you for some reason. Uh, Rob, let's see. Did yes, you... I'm here. Yep. What's the one yep. thing behaviorally you're going to do different as a result of Ignite? I'm going to focus. And I don't have to worry about anything now because I stirred up Hilda and she's going to be beating me with a stick from now on. So I've got a coach and I don't even have to pay her. She's going to be making sure I do bold 100. She's going to be coming by my desk. I stirred her up, so I woke in the sleeping bear. Oh, but I charge. I'll charge in burritos and Modellos. <laughs> there we go. I'll buy her lunch. That'll keep her happy. There you nothing, go. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you succeed. See, all you got to do is just get her going, and she, I'll be, I guarantee I'll be doing bold 100s every day. There She'll be you on go. my desk going, Rob, get it done. All right, That's Monday, Rob, Monday. Needs. That's what you need. Excellent. Thank you, Rob. Let's see, how about Harish? To me, I'm just a new, but just one thing I heard from everyone's experience and Anna just said the right thing, which I facing the same. And 
I would like to, you know, start connecting with the people. I have missed so many of them and which I always would like to talk to, but somehow I did not. And working with this, uh, you know, business, I definitely would like to do that. And there are good things. And I has the absolute right thing to say about both the things she said about connecting as well as the rule of five seconds. That was fantastic. I would love to implement both of them. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Harish. Yeah, that's what makes these sessions like this valuable, is hearing that one thing uh, that we might have missed or not gotten. So very good. Thank you, Harish. Uh, Tia Wu, how about you? I'm you myself. You know, my one thing is always Lee Jam. That's my weakest link. Yep. <laughs> So that's exactly the reason I want to go on trainings to just remind myself the the legion, the one thing. And actually what I got from this Ignite is very, very practical. Just one tiny thing I want to share. Maha yes, share a tip about writing offer. She said, mm -hmm. even the listing agent require you to write the full disclosure signatures. You don't have to write on the receive of the copy to tell them, promise them 24 hours you'll get a full disclosure sent in if your offer is accepted. That's exactly what I did yesterday. It works perfectly. I only spent an hour for the offer before anyone can have a chance. And we got that ratified and I have my TC sending the disclosure. So my workload was cut so much and the success rate was wonderful. So that's a, that's a very useful tip. Thank you, Mahar. I know you're not here, but thank you. Yes, thank you. Excellent. That's a great behavioral change. Sorry, can you explain that a little more? I didn't really understand what you meant. What tip did she share? Okay. So, you know, as a buyer's agent, we are at one side of the buyer's agent. Yeah. This stage, non contingency offers the way to win the heart of the mm -hmm. sellers. Yeah. In order to be non contingency as uh, Mark already explained, you have to sign off the disclosures. Yes. That, in that in a lot of instruction, they ask you to sign on every single damn page. Yes. The dollar sign. It can take you two hours to be very careful. Like I read through where I do all those DocuSign. It takes forever. Mm -hmm. I used to spend four hours. It was ridiculous. Maha told me from a listing perspective, she's a listing specialist. She's a wonderful buyer specialist as well. She said, do your offers, sign on the receipt page of the disclosure, only put on the note. Disclosure will be fully signed within 24 hours after oh. acceptance. You said that in your cover page and said that in your email to the listing agent. So they got that. And that can save you one right. or two hours because back and forth got all those signatures and dated back and forth as for signature. And you can finish your offer within like 30 minutes, 10 minutes. It save you, it, you act fast. That's amazing. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> That's a great, great insight. Tip. Yeah, thank you so Good much. Good deal. Thank you, Tina. Anytime, thank you. Is there anybody else that was not available when I called on you or I have overlooked accidentally? Okay, looks like we're all right. Well, I wanna thank each and every one of you for your participation throughout all of Ignite we are so excited and thankful that every one of you is here. And I remind you that, of course, you already know, but it never hurts to hear it again. Everyone who taught in this Ignite is available as a resource for you. We all have areas of expertise, and you are more than welcome to engage us whenever we can be of help to you personally or to your business. So thank you very much, one and all. Uh, reminder, there is a graduation party if you're with KWS-CV. I hear them out there rattling around doing that right now. So uh, I want to thank you again all and wish you the best business you can possibly do. Keep growing it and remember to come back to your resources. Bob, if I can um, just take a moment, I would really like to acknowledge and thank the staff 
for organizing um, Ignite 2.0. Particularly, I'd like to call out and recognize Jacqueline, uh, who has been on the call every single day, um, monitoring the chat, uh, making sure that the meeting started on time, sending out text reminders. Um, it's a heavy load to do for 19 days straight. So, uh, or almost, I th yeah, I think 19 or 20 days straight. Um, Jacqueline, thank you very much on behalf of the entire staff and all the attendees. It certainly would not happen uh, without your commitment to the program. So again, thank you everybody for being here. We appreciate you. Go out and make the absolute best of every nugget of knowledge that you took in and uh, we'll all be holding you very accountable. But thank you very much. We appreciate you and happy graduation to everyone. Happy graduation. Woohoo! Thank okay, you. thanks thank you, you guys. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Congratulations. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hilda. Thank you everyone.